Hello and welcome to screencast two of the lympho uh, lymphatic system. So we're moving on to the cells, tissues, organs. Here are some of the immune system cells that you'll find associated with the lymphatic system. You've seen some of these already, T cells and B cells. These are types of lymphocyte, which we'll detail more in the next chapter. Macrophages and dendritic cells are both phagocytes and reticular cells make this fiber over here, this reticular fiber. And this stuff is called stroma. That general, you know, pattern of these reticular fibers is called stroma. And this is where the little phagocytes hang out and the lymphocytes hang out to, to await their enemies' uh, pathogens. The reticular connective tissue is, is basically that type of tissue. That's the, the base structure of it. It can be found either as what they call diffuse lymphoid tissue, which is scattered in lots of tissues throughout your body, or as follicles, which are more compact uh, units of, of lymphoid tissue. And these are famously found in your lymph nodes uh, and Peyer's patches, which we'll talk about later. Germinal centers are found here, which are places where you're going to get B cells making many copies of themselves. This is important uh, and we'll detail next chapter because once a B cell gets a sort of a imprinted by a pathogen, making copies of it makes many, many, many copies of the cell that are all imprinted on that pathogen. So it makes it tough on the pathogen. Moving on to the organs, there are what are called primary organs, which are where the cells mature, B and T cells mature. This includes your red bone marrow and your thymus. Uh, B cells and T cells are both made in the marrow, but B cells mature here, whereas T cells mature in the thymus. Secondary lymphoid organs are where they get exposed to the pathogens, or antigens is what I said here. Pathogens have antigens on them. Uh, the nodes in the spleen, lymph nodes being especially important, and then in stuff called malt. Malt is an example of mu well, it is mucosa associated lymphoid tissue, but it's pretty much diffuse lympho lymphoid tissue. It's kind of scattered. Uh, your tonsils are good examples of that. Moving on to the nodes, these are where you, the most important, I would say, cleaning sites for lymph. And you have hundreds of them scattered all around your body. Uh, macrophages and dendritic cells hang out in there as lymph is brought in from these afferent vessels. Afferent means towards. Uh, it passes through the cortex, passes through the medulla, and goes out through these efferent vessels. And it's going to be kind of just moving constantly uh, upward and uh, inwards from your limbs till eventually it gets to your abdomen, your thorax, and then dumps back into those uh, subclavian veins. If you get a severe infection, your lymph nodes can swell. And you've probably felt that before. I've felt it in my underarms before when I've had a real bad uh, cold or some infection. And you may have noticed it in your neck. Right? Your mom may have like put her hand on your neck and said, oh, you're swollen. But during the uh, bubonic plague, which was uh, lasted for centuries really, but was most deadly in the 14th century in, in Europe and it killed millions and millions and millions of people. And that's where you get the name bubonic plague because the lymph nodes in your armpit and groin and neck would swell so bad that they would eventually burst. And if you can imagine a burst lymph node, uh, it's full of, it's basically a big sack of infected pus. <laughs> so that would be kind of nasty. But they call those buboes and thus the term bubonic plague. Here are some lymphoid organs, the spleen, which is found on sort of the left side of your body. Uh, sometimes you'll hear a quarterback in, the, in football have a, a, a damaged spleen from getting sacked. So if, some, if the defensive end comes around from the, your left side and hits you in the back left side of your body without that armor, you can really do some internal damage. You'll see this in car crashes and motorcycle crashes too. Any case, important organ uh, for a couple of reasons. It allows lymphocytes to multiply and it houses a lot of macrophages and in a non sort of lymphatic function it also breaks down and recycles old red blood cells and stores a lot of blood and platelets. Uh, you'll have to be able to identify that stuff in in lab the white pulp and red pulp but not in lecture but just know what it's for right. 
white pulp has lots of, of lymphocytes kind of waiting for uh, you know pathogens to be brought in and then the red pulp which is the mass the rest of the the organ is for blood recycling and storage here's malt with some specific examples and where they are uh, your tonsils you got four uh, sets of tonsils uh, sometimes they're one big patch sometimes they're paired doesn't we don't need to know that in uh, for lecture you don't have to identify them know they're in your back of your throat and their names here if you ever heard somebody having their adenoids removed this is infected pharyngeal tonsils. Uh, Pyre's patches, that's again, like I said, in your uh, ileum of your small intestine, and we'll, we'll see that in the, in the digestive system chapter. And then lastly, your appendix. Now, you, you often hear that the appendix is vestigial, which means it doesn't do anything. Uh, that's not true. You can have it removed and be fine, but when it's there, it's doing a job. Uh, your colon is right next door. Uh, or actually your colon is where the appendix is attached, but your small intestine is right next door. You have lots of bacteria living in your colon, but not as many living in your small intestine. So the appendix is kind of right there at the gateway, just like the pyrus patches. Appendix being in the large intestine side of the door, and the pyrus patches being on the small intestine side of the door. And lastly, we already mentioned the thymus, but that's where the T cells mature. The last slide here, eventually, is kind of just a little nice summary. All right, that's it. That was short and sweet. Uh, that's all you get for lecture for lymphatic system.